Hello and welcome to episode 2 of Let's Play Civilization 6 Japan. Uh, we are picking up where we last left off, uh, literally. I just paused the game and continued playing. Uh, and yeah, we are just working on our capital city, uh, fighting the Sumerians for territory already. It's going to be an interesting start. There are no quarries, so I can't get the masonry uh, bonus, but I think I should be able to research it soon enough and build some walls early. There we go. Early empire. Oh, I don't need... Oh, I just need uh, six population points, so four and two will give me six. Oh, that's it good. is equally important to have a happy and engaged workforce as it is to have a profitable bottom line. Okay, that's nice that, to be able to get that going. Uh, let's get a library going early. Now I have two envoys sent to Lisbon. And I think after the library, I wanna. No, no. I want to get some more uh, units out. Just protect myself against attack. My liege, we are beginning to attract. The more specialized districts we construct, the more. That's just telling me that I'm starting to generate great people points. And one of the thing the UI things I wish they would do is they actually have a little master list somewhere saying how many points of each you're generating, rather than kind of have to go to find individual uh, things going on. Your Grace, we have obtained greater knowledge in the art of... Each of us is carving a stone. Um, sorry, by the way, if you wanted to listen to the uh, descriptions of the text. I did I, I did wait for them in my first playthrough, but uh, I'm just going to click through them most of the time now. It was luxuries like air conditioning that brought down the Roman Empire. With air conditioning, their windows were shut. They couldn't oh. hear the barbarians coming. I do want to comment on this. There, there was actually a bit of a kerfuffle on the forums. Uh, people were commenting that they felt the quotes in this game were too negative, and citing this quote as an example. But this is not a negative quote. This is a bit of a jokey, tongue-in-cheek quote. Obviously, the, Roman, the Romans never had air conditioning, but they're talking about the luxuries like air conditioning, bringing down, bringing down the empire is kind of the subtext there is that at least one view of uh, the f decline and fall of the Roman Empire, and you hear conservatives kind of repeat this quite a bit because it fits their ideology, is uh, that, you know, easy living and luxur luxurious uh, lifestyles are bad for uh, democracy and republics. And what the 
uh, Gibbon, which is he wrote the decline and fall of the Roman Empire in the seven, 18th century. So around the time the founding fathers were around, the American founding fathers were around, um, his premise was that the the luxurious living of the Romans, especially after Hadrian's reforms, setting the borders permanently, so there's no more need for it to expand. The citizenry no longer needs to go out to fight. They hired mercenaries instead to fight in their place, things like that. Uh, uh, his view was it started to eat into the fabric of the Roman Republic, or at the time already the Empire, but the you know the body politic, the body politic of the Romans was um, yeah we'll go political philosophy. So yeah, so that's his view, and that quote there is kind of citing that point of view that luxuries contributed to the to the decline and fall of the Roman Empire, but. It's not a negative quote, it's just tongue-in-cheek and pointing out certain things about the Roman Empire or views of, of empire. Um, We'll try to build the third city here on the coast. made us all out of iron. Then he turns up the heat to forge. You can see here we're way behind the two known civ we've met. Uh, what do I want? Oh, I wanted to see where I can get to machinery to be able to build lumber mills, so... Okay. The nice thing about having borders like this is I can deploy my uh, units forward, or forward deploy them, and I don't have to worry about my rear so much, except for barbarians, so... But it makes defending a little bit easier. In my last game, I was literally here, and then there was a sieve here, a sieve up here, a sieve south of me, it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. So, but you know having a relaxing start like this is not good as well because like I said I tend to play more sloppily when I when that happens okay I'm going to uh, really passing by okay yeah the AI is very finicky about that so I'm gonna move the units back I'm gonna buy a builder here because it's taking forever for Tokyo to build anything. Oh. What's this? Trading post traded. We did create it. Okay. Oh, Lisbon's gonna give us a ton of money. Let's send it to Lisbon. I need the money. Although, having a route to Tokyo would be nice as well. But I'm going to wait for now. Okay. 
Gonna get that Mercury mine up early. I think what the Sumerians are gonna do, they're gonna send ships around and settle up north here. The opportunity has arrived for a change into a new... Politics is the art of the possible, the attainable, the art... Okay, uh... So, trauma. Ah, uh, I'm not building any wonders, so that's a bit wasted. I'm not fighting any wars right now. So I think I like to go ca ca uh, Classical Republic. And the le legacy bonus is very nice. Mm, There's one that gives me... Uh, let's do that. Plus 50 production towards ancient classical melee and range units. Yeah, let's do that. There's one that gives me um, a bonus to producing defensive buildings. But I probably haven't researched that yet. So I'm going to wait for my promise not to settle near them to expire, and then if they still haven't settled this plot here, I'm going to send a city. I'm going to plop the city down here. Oh, there's a barbarian cat. Start moving this out. Okay. Uh, get another spearman out. As you can see, there's almost no point uh, building wonders this early because the AI's advantages are so huge uh, that you just end up losing a lot and not producing anything. Or you might get one wonder, uh, but then you have no infrastructure. I think the Sumerians have that camp taken. We're going to send our envoys to Lisbon, so we'll get suzerain over them as well. And I'm building the commercial hub because we have the Lisbon bonus.
I think settling around on top of the silk might make sense because I can grab these two. Yeah, I should be able to grab these two. Grab the wheat, the elk, the wheat here. Yeah, and then there's a little hill here. Defensible coast. Close to my capital city, I'll have my three cities core, and I'll decide where my fourth one will go. There's iron here, obviously, so I want to settle somewhere down here. Okay, my promise has been fulfilled, so I might try settling up there again. Okay, moving my archers back. Did I get it for Lisbon? Yes. Oh, they're really going to aggressively settle. Uh, One man's magic is another man's engineering. Can I block them off here? It's gonna cost me all my gold, probably. Okay, let's see what happens if I do that. I can get a Eureka here for owning three archers. Okay. Let me switch my build to an archer real quick. And it doesn't hurt to have more military, given the current tensions with the uh, Sumerians. I see that the uh, Spanish are out in full force trying to convert us, which is fine, because we're not working on a religion on an, uh, an immortal game, there's just no way that's going to happen. They can convert me if they want. Ha, ah, go back to where you came from. All the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. Should get our Eureka. There we go. Oh, I got a bonus for having a large standing army didn't realize that. Well, that's good, because you want a relatively big standing army uh, in this game. Or with this difficulty level, too. Okay. So the other thing is, I need to save money to get um, to get some builders going. So let me see if I can trade some of them away. I'm going to trade them to the Sumerians.
Yes, we'll take it. Because I need to buy builders as soon as I can get the um, number of mills going, I can build some mills here. I need to go back to sailing so I can uh, embark my scout to explore the uh, continent. First, that's more important. Finish my sailing. Ancient walls. Tokyo needs defense. It is not that life ashore is distasteful to me, but life at sea is better. Okay. I'm gonna rush a builder here. Because this city needs more production, I'm gonna start a trade route directly to Tokyo next. That's gonna grow Kyoto, but that means Tokyo is not getting any extra production or food. Can't build uh, lumber mills yet? That's surprising. Uh, huh. I'm gonna move him and build a uh, mine here just for production. One thing I'm still trying to get used to is this thing where uh, a unit will end its turn with movement points because the next movement point is like onto a hill it can't move to. So you'll never end in a scenario where your units run out of movement points. Set your course by the stars. And then your unit is out of turns. Uh, in this game, a lot of times you'll end a turn with units with still movement points on it, but is because you're standing next to a hill and it can't get on the hill until the next turn, which is a little bit different. And the reason why I couldn't build that stupid thing is I didn't finish my research. I'm dumb. I was too eager to switch out. I <sighs> don't know what I'm thinking. Oh. 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 They just built a city, like, right next there. God damn. Remember that people break down too, not just machinery. Uh, 
People who cannot find time for recreation are sooner or later to find. Well, this is going to be interesting. <laughs> the uh, Sumerians are aggressive. Okay, so I have to think aggressively. Uh, what do they want? Train a crossbow, not a hard one to do, like right now. And so merchant, naval tradition. Okay, so I'm gonna build an encampment after this, probably right here. Actually, I think I know what I'm going to do. Let's buy this tile, and then we'll build an encampment right here. That's a desert tile, so it's a bit useless. Uh, I'm going to build city walls because they can attack us directly from here now. is spiritually as well as physically bigger. I'm gonna skip that. Because we're gonna get our Eureka once we get our encampment up in 10 turns. No point using that. Uh, we can start that. Okay, so I think this is a good place to stop. This is a bit of a shorter episode, uh, but what I want to think about is maybe attacking Sipar before to get their walls up, because I think I should be able to take it quickly with crossbows uh, with uh, what I have right now. Uh, when they get the walls up, then it's going to take longer. But the I have to just worry about uh, how much military Gilgamesh has. Well, he has 721 points to R197. So uh, this is not accurate, obviously. Um, but it just gives you a gauge of the number of units that they have. So we'll think about that. Okay, thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.